In this part, we'll be talking about excretory system in earthworm. Excretory system basically uh, works on removal of the waste and these wastes are of two categories. One is carbon dioxide and the other is nitrogenous waste. Now in earthworms, this nitrogenous waste is eliminated in two forms. It can be ammonia or urea. Now the conditions when ammonia is eliminated, then they are called ammonotelic. And for removal of ammonia, large quantity of water is required. So earthworms would be ammonotelic or they would be excreting ammonia only when water is available in plenty or they are in aquatic condition. But if they are terrestrial, then they become ureotelic. This is when they are terrestrial and water is not available in that excess amount. Because for removal of ammonia, large quantity of water is required, whereas for urea, less amount is required. So if they are terrestrial, they would prefer conserving that water and eliminating urea with less water. So they can be ammonotelic or ureotelic depending upon the condition where these earthworms are. The structure which helps in elimination of nitrogenous waste, they are called nephridia. Carbon dioxide is lost through skin. So there is no special structure required. But for this, the structure is nephridium, singular and nephridia. Now these nephridia are of three types. The first are called septal nephridia. Septal nephridia, as the name tells us, they are attached on the septa. And they start from 15th segment to the last one. So if we draw some segments here, say this is the 15th segment, 16th and so on. So these nephridia are present attached to the septum. So here would be these nephridia attached. Now on the 15th segment, because there is this septum, which is between 14th and 15th, the nephridia will not be on the other side of the septum. But after this, the nephridia are present on both the sides of these septa. So on one side, there are about 40 to 50 nephridia. So total in a segment, there would be around 80 to 100 nephridia. And these nephridia are actually the typical nephridia. And why are they called typical nephridia? Because they show all the basic structures which should be there in a nephridia. The structure is, there is a funnel-like opening. This opening is known as nephrostome. This nephrostome leads into a narrow tube which is called the neck and then this tube gets highly coiled and ultimately it opens out through an opening or aperture. The aperture is known as nephridiopore that means the nephrostome is going to be in the body cavity it is going to collect all the waste material from the coelomic fluid when that goes through this tube all the useful things will be reabsorbed and unwanted things will remain here and through this pore 
they would be dumped into a place. Now, in case of septonephridia, the waste is dumped into intestine. That means these nephridia, they collect the waste and the waste is dumped into an internal structure. So, we call them, they are enteronephric. That means the waste is dumped into the internal structure. This is one type. The second type of nephridia are known as integumentary. Integumentary nephridia, again the name tells us that they are on the integument. Integument means on the skin and they are present from the third to the last segment. These nephridia, they do not have nephrostome. So, they have a blunt tube-like structure, which is again a coiled structure. And it opens through an opening. Now, the waste is thrown out of the body. That means, this is going to be the skin and this is the skin or integument. And the waste will be thrown out of the body. That means these nephridia are exonephric. They dump the waste material directly outside the body. The third type, okay, let us talk about the numbers also. Integumentary nephridia are normally 200 to 250 per segment. In every segment, this number is going to be there except for clitellar region. In clitellum, clitellum means 14th, 15th and 16th segment. The number of these nephridia is very, very large. It is 2000 to 2500, sorry, 2000 to 2500 per segment. And that is why Clitellum is known as forest of nephridia. Forest of nephridia. And they are exonephric. So out of these two which we have talked of, one is enteronephric. It is going to dump the waste into elementary canal. And integumentary ones are exonephric. Now let us talk about the third type. Third type of nephridia are called pharyngeal nephridia. These nephridia are present in clusters in 4th, 5th and 6th segments. They also do not have nephrostome. That means they are pretty much like integumentary one. Similar to integumentary nephridia and they are also enteronephric. They dump the waste into the buccal cavity. So waste would be dumped into buccal cavity, whereas in this case, the waste goes into the intestine part. So, out of three nephridia, two are enteronephric and one is exonephric. That means this one is going to throw the waste outside the body, whereas the other two are going to dump it into the elementary canal and finally it will be taken out of the body. So, the main structure which is responsible for elimination of waste material is a nephridium or these are the three types of nephridia. We talk of one more type of cell which is present in these annelids like earthworm and these cells are called chloregogon cells. These chloregogon cells are found in coelom that is in the body cavity 
and they perform two functions. One is storage of glycogen and removal and storage of nitrogenous waste. Removal and storage of nitrogenous wastes. In case of vertebrates, this function is performed by liver. So, they work like vertebrate liver. And these cells are in the body cavity in the coelomic fluid. So, main structure is nephridium and there are some cells which also help in removal of the nitrogenous waste. If plenty of water is there, the waste would be ammonia. If water is not available in that excess quantity, then they are going to be ureotelic. And septal nephridia are the typical ones which have the opening called nephrostome, tube and the nephridial pore. Whereas the other two, they do not have nephrostome. Instead, they have just a tubular part which collects the waste from the siloam and or siloamic fluid and then through the opening it is either uh, thrown out of the body on the skin and then here it could be in the elementary canal itself. So they are able to eliminate the nitrogenous waste which is produced in their body. In the next part we will take up one more system of earthworm and see how that system works.